Hello, this is Chas with Heirloom Leaves and Seeds, and today I thought I would talk about all of the flowers I grew for 2023. All of my favorites, so the ones that really stood out. And in another video, I will talk about the few I probably won't be growing for cut flower production anymore. So let's get started. These are all the ones that I'm going to grow this year, and they just stood out in some way, and I really like them and want to continue growing them. So let's start first with dahlias. I love dahlias. They are a great focal point in the autumn and they produce so many flowers in the couple months you have to work with them. Now this year I grew Genova, Rip City, Marne, Linda's Baby, Florel, Cornell Bronze, Cafe Au Lait, and Labyrinth. Those were all the new varieties I grew for 2023. And I have to say my favorites were probably Genova, Rick City, and Florel. Those were my favorites. I have a few new ones I want to try this year. One I've wanted for a while now is Ginger Willow. I've never grown, they're pretty small, and I just keep going back to it. I like the name, I like the color. And it would be nice to have just a smaller little dahlia. I also want a red and white one. I'm not sure on the variety yet. And I love the color of Rick City. There's a black Narciss, Narcissus that I would like to try. And I think there's another one. But, and maybe a nice pink. I had one. I can't think of the name last year. Something Pearl. I've drawn a blank. I'll put it up here once I think of it. But I just want another pink. It seems like a lot of them are very orangey. Marn, Linda ba Linda's Baby, and Cornell Bronze. And if I'm being honest, I had Cornell Bronze and Marn all together right in a corner. And I almost could not even tell them apart. I was like, which one is which? They looked very similar. But if you look at a lot of the pictures, they didn't. They looked completely different, but when I was growing them, they looked very similar. Some more dark, some pink, um, a red and white, and ginger willow is on my list. But yes, definitely more dahlias. Zinnias, oh my goodness. Zinnias are my favorite flower to grow. They're so fun, and they come in so many different colors and shapes. You can do like the Cinderella peach. You can do a great big Venaries giant. You can do the little lily puts. Um, so there's so many to do. The peppermint stick zinnia. I never knew I was a fan of the red and white zinnias, but they were so pretty and they worked well. Surprisingly, you wouldn't think so, but they actually worked very well in bouquets. So I want to add more peppermint stick zinnias. I actually only did like two plants last year, one or two and um, I wish I had grown more. I just thought I'd do just to, just to try them out, but I ended up really loving them. All right, next on the list is Celosia, and I love these guys. They're very versatile in the shapes, and they grow so easily, and they are great. I don't know if I would call them a filler. That's kind of how I use them, just to add some space and space Kind of a spike depending on the type of celosia but i really like those and i'm just going to keep experimenting with different colors i i did a lot of peach and the light pinks last year and i did a very bright forest fire that was really nice and a different type of color of celosia for me and i really liked it surprisingly and this year I'm actually going to try like a light lime green. So I'm looking forward to that one too. And I'm just gonna keep trying them out. One of my favorites was the Texas Plume this year. I really liked that. They had different colors and shapes in it and I just really loved them. Okay, the next is basil. I really liked basil this year. I've always liked basil. It's fun to grow. It's funny, I don't use it a lot when I cook, but 
don't know if you guys do this as well, but there's just certain plants I like to grow. And I love the basil seeds. They're very cute when they are little seedlings and just starting out. But I like to grow all the basil. This year I grew cinnamon, aromato, a lemon, um, dark purple opal basil. And I just love them all. And I will continue to grow them. Okay, the next is Jewels of Opar. This was the first year I've ever grown that plant and I loved it. It had these lime green succulent leaves and then it would get a long spray that was like a light and airy filler I could use in bouquets and I was really impressed with them and I will definitely be growing more next year. Rebecca, I really like Triloba. I like they will get a long spray and just little tiny yellow flowers. It's a nice airy cut flower to add to bouquets. I also grew Sahara and I think Cherokee Sunset and I like those as well. It was kind of hard to get the timing right on those. I don't know. I wasn't the biggest fan of those but I definitely like the Trilobe. Alright, and the next one is sunflowers. I love sunflowers. They are really fun to grow. I did several varieties this year. I did a lot of the Pro Cut series. I did Starburst Panache. Those were my favorites. I wasn't the biggest fan of Frilly. It just didn't really stand out. I liked the other ones. I did a Vincent's Choice as well, and I really liked them. And I will definitely be growing more of them. Cosmos. I did several varieties of Cosmos and I like them. They're fun to grow. I haven't tried it, but some people will even just use the foliage. It's very ferny like and they will use that as a filler in bouquets. I want to try that this year. I did the Africata this year and I really liked that variety and I do a lot. I've done Rubenza, some of the cupcake series. I did one called Xanthos this year, and I wasn't the biggest fan of it. It was a pale yellow, and it just it would be really good for just blending in with a bouquet and not really standing out. But I think I'll pass on that this year. Another one that did that was um, Apricot Lemonade. And I passed on that. Sometimes the very pale, smaller Cosmos just didn't work for what I want to use them. Very beautiful, but I didn't like them in my bouquets. But definitely more Africata, Rebenza, some of the Picatees, some cupcakes. I'll definitely be growing those again this year. Status, oh, I love the status. They did really good for me. I'm doing a QIS mix this year. I think I've done the apricot this year in another mix and they just work really well. I love their succulent foliage and the only thing I don't like about them, and I don't know if anybody else struggles with this like I do, but sometimes it's hard except for the very beginning of the year. It's almost like, are they ending or beginning? Like the flowers, are they just opening up or are they almost done? I don't know why I struggle with that with them. They're the only flower I really struggle with this with. But for some reason, it's hard for me. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to really concentrate on them. But other than that, I love them. They're very beautiful and they look like, almost like a weird little alien plant coming out of the ground in the spring. All right, the next is I grew a me. Green Mist and the Chocolate Lace Flower. I really liked both of these. For me here in Tennessee, these get so big. <laughs> I mean, they are like as big as shrubs here for me. And they produce so many flowers on each plant. I only had two. I just kind of sampled the Ami Green Mist and I had two plants and that was all I needed for the whole year. <laughs> Because they're kind of fleeting. They will, it's like they are growing this big, beautiful, lush green plant and you're building up to it. And then they produce the flowers 
and it's like the flowers don't last all that long. For me, I just need a couple plants. I think five would be perfect. I would not need more than that, but they are so pretty. I think the chocolate lace flower is probably my favorite. In that mix, I got like the dark purpley maroon color and then the light pink. It's almost like a vintage mauvey pink and then there's a cream color, but I really liked those. I think that's my favorite of the two. Next is Scabiosa. I did, I think Dark Knight was my favorite that I grew last year. I did Snow Maiden as well. I definitely love the Black Knight though. Those are absolutely beautiful. All right, next is Chinese Forget-Me-Nots. Those were very, very cool. I love them. I did, I think the variety was called Firmament. And I think Blue Showers might be a little bit better, but I haven't grown it, but I've noticed a lot of people go to that one instead of the Firmament. I have the seeds for Firmament, Firmament. So I'll probably just grow those again this year, but I'm gonna be on the lookout for Blue Showers. Seems like all the, the people I buy from, they don't have the Blue Showers, they just have the Firmament. But I did really like it. They were a little wimpy in the heat of summer, but other than that, they're so beautiful and they give you that true blue flower. Gonfrina, <laughs> they're very beautiful, but I grew way too many last year. I could not keep up with the deadheading. I didn't realize how much they produced. This is only my second year growing flowers. Last year was only for my daughter's wedding. It was very different. All I had to do was grow flowers and have them blooming in August. And it was very different growing them for year-round production. But the Gonfrina, I don't know how many plants I had. Probably about a hundred. <laughs> I grew way too many and they kind of beat me down. I, was, I gave up at the end of the year. I was like, I can't keep up with this. But they're very um, pretty and they dried very well. I did the Audrey series and the fireworks and I really liked both of them, but definitely we'll scale back this year. I'm doing strawberry fields and a QIS Carmine for this year. Okay, next is my all-time favorite flower of 2023, and that is an Nicotiana jasmine scented. Those, I just thought, from a description, sounded very neat. They smell like jasmine in the evenings, and I always like white flowers, but I thought I'd just try them. I, I wasn't even really thinking about growing them for a cut flower, but they were so beautiful. They did so well. They smelled so good in the evenings. And I put a few plugs in our landscaping around our house and they, they've overwintered. They're green right now, which I didn't think they would. So I was very happy about that. That was definitely a shocker. I have never grown it before. I've never even seen it like in somebody's gardening landscape. So I didn't know what to expect. I just thought it'd be neat to have a white flower in the evening that smelled good. And I know that they can draw in moths to pollinate them. So very pleasantly surprised and they worked well as a cut flower as well. All right, next is bachelor buttons. No complaints here. Um, they are beautiful, easy to grow. I like to dry their flowers. They're beautiful in bouquets. Definitely, we'll be growing those again. Same for Larkspur. These are all cool flowers. I did Smoky Eyes last year. Really love that one. And planning, I've got some growing right now in the garden. They're doing great. Digitalis. Definitely love them. I went way overboard on the biennial foxglove seeds. I have so many right now in the garden. I did Cafe Creme on Alba, Excelsior, Dalmatian Peach. I did several, I'm drawing a blank right now. But Digitalis was definitely a very nice um, spiky element to the bouquets last year and I will definitely be growing them again. Next is Orlea. 
These have uh, kind of made a little meadow in a section of our property and I love them. They're so easy to grow and they self seed and they just give me all the flowers I could possibly want. I love them. They're so pretty. They're so um, beautiful in early spring and I feel like I will always grow these guys. Next is Nigella. These are fun. I love the pods. I grew Kramer's Plum last year, Green Marbles, and African Bride. I liked all of them. I think African Bride and Kramer's Plum was my favorite. Yeah, they're very cool. I love the pods. I like the flowers and we'll be growing those again. Next is Snapdragons. There's a funny story with these Snapdragons. I was under the assumption that you could only start them in the fall. I don't know what gave me this idea. I guess I was kind of new last year to it and I thought, oh, the only time you can start snapdragons is in the fall and that's what I did and they did good. They sprouted, I planted them out and then January or February. I was so happy I had tons. We got the worst weather we've gotten in years and it froze, there was ice everywhere and it got down to zero degrees, very cold. And it wiped out so many of my cool flowers. And I was thinking like, well, that is unfortunate. And that was my chance to grow snapdragons. Guess I won't have them this year, and along with a lot of other ones. My mom had some snapdragon seeds, no name varieties, it was just snapdragon. And I got like five seeds and I planted them and I thought, well, it's worth a try. You know, it was still early spring. And so I planted them. Every seed came up. I planted them out. They did wonderful. They gave me snapdragons all season. And the ones that froze and just the horrible weather, I had a few survive. 95% of them got wiped out and those did beautifully and produced all year pretty much and so impressed with just a couple plants that I did have and this year I am doing a ton. I'm do I've already got some started and then I plan on doing more in early spring but oh, I love the snapdragons. So beautiful. So there is the list of some of the favorite flowers that I grew for 2023 and I grow for our farmers market and I do bouquets and wrapped bouquets, jar bouquets, mini bouquets. And these are my favorites that I grew all year. Now in a little bit, I will do some of the ones that I will no longer be growing and I'll tell you why. But thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye.